Welcome to the installation video of Hoymiles HMS 2000 DW 14. This series of videos consists of five chapters: overview, preparation, microinverter installation, network configuration, and plant creation. The installation tutorial applies to the following microinverter models. You can refer to the user manual if you need more information. Please note that only those who have been properly trained or who demonstrate relevant skills can install and maintain this microinverter under instructions. In this video, we will guide you through the installation process of a 4 kW PV system, which is composed of two HMS 2000 w 4 t microinverters, AC trunk cable, and eight solar panels. Now, let's take a look at the tools that we are going to use. For installation tools, we need electric screwdriver, diagonal cutter, wire stripper, crimping tool, torque wrench, and steel tape. For personal protection equipment, we need helmets, gloves, overalls, and safety ropes. As for other auxiliary tools, we need M8 bolts, metal tie wrap, grounding accessories, marker pen, grounding cable, DC extension cable, and 3-core AC cable. The microinverter accessories we will use are HMS ceiling cap, HMS connection cable, HMS extension connector, HMS trunk connector, HMS connector, and HMS disconnect tool. Open the microinverter package. We can see a parameter label in the middle part and a serial number label on the left. There is a Wi-Fi wireless terminal on the upper left corner, jacks on the lower left and lower right corners as DC connectors, an outlet wire on the upper right corner as an AC connector, and a screw hole in the middle of the handle as a grounding hole. Now, we come to the installation of the microinverter. Before everything begins, we should mark the appropriate installation location of the microinverter according to the plan. Step 1. Fix the screws at the predetermined place on the rail. Hang the microinverter on the screws. Tighten the screws. Please note that the label of the microinverter should be facing the panel. Then, route a continuous grounding cable through grounding brackets of each microinverter to the AC grounding electrode that conforms with local regulations. When all the microinverters are installed, plug the AC connector of the microinverter branch into the HMS trunk connector until you heard a click sound. Then cover the unused port with the HMS ceiling cap to make it watertight. Select the HMS connection cable of a suitable length and plug it into the trunk connector until you hear the click. Please make sure the marks on the engaged ports are the same. Now, let's move on to the next microinverter. Plug the microinverter and the connection cable into the trunk connector. When the distance between two microinverters is too far, you can either choose a longer connection cable or use extension connectors to join the connection cables together. Now, let's make the AC and cable with the trunk connector of the last microinverter in the system. First, prepare an AC cable of a suitable length. The cable should cover the distance from the end of the AC trunk cable to the distribution box. The HMS connector can be disassembled into six parts, and you should slide the parts onto the AC cable in the correct order. Strip off the outer jacket with a diagonal cutter. Use a wire stripper to strip the insulation to a suitable length. Insert the conductor into the terminal pin and crimp it tightly. Next, insert the crimped wires into the wire holder. Make sure that L or N or PE lines are in the correct slots. Plug the fixed wires into the HMS cable connector and firmly tighten the nut with the HMS disconnect tool or a torque wrench. Connect the AC and cable to the last HMS trunk cable connector and fix the cable with tie wraps. Finally, peel the serial number label from each microinverter and affix them to the corresponding place on the installation map. 
Connecting PV modules is to connect the microinverters to the PV modules. Please determine whether you need DC extension cables based on your situation. In this project, we used extension cables for some modules. First, place the PV modules onto the rail and use the DC extension cables to connect the PV modules to the microinverter. Finally, move the PV modules above the microinverter and fix them. Repeat the above steps to connect all PV modules. Now, we need to connect the AC and cable to the distribution box. Please note that the grid connection and system energizing shall be performed by professionals after obtaining the permit from the grid operator. Connect the distribution box to the local grid to complete the microinverter installation. Don't forget to go through the checklist to see if every step is done. Next is the setup process for connecting the microinverter to the network via the S-Miles installer app. Before start, please update your S-Miles installer app to the latest version. Type in the username and password. Click Login and you will be directed to the Plants page. Click the O and M icon at the bottom of the page. And then click the Network Configuration. Then the app will alert you that Wi-Fi is not connected. Click Confirm to redirect to the WLAN page. On the WLAN settings, select and connect to the microinverter's hotspot. Return to the O&M screen and click Network Config icon. On the Wi-Fi settings, manually input the name and password of the Wi-Fi to be connected, and then click the Send to DTU button. The network configuration takes about one minute to complete. Please wait patiently. Now, we're going to start plant creation. Let's go back to the plants page. Click plus sign on the upper left and start building your plant. First, you need to fill in the name of your plant and other basic information. Please avoid duplicate plant names. Then select the plant type and enter the capacity of your system. Please note that the plant type cannot be changed once it is created. So please select one that suits your installation situation and the installed capacity. Next, select your time zone. Please make sure you select the right time zone because a wrong one will affect the display of your daily power generation. Then select the area where your power plant is located. The map will automatically locate your current area. You can locate the area either by dragging and zooming the map with gestures, or by manually entering detailed address information. Then choose your region. You can upload a picture of your plant if you want to add the cover. Click Next. Go to the Owner Information page. Click the icon in the upper right corner to add an account. In this step, you need to set up a login account, password, username, and fill in email and phone information, then click save. And you can see the owner information you have added. Then click next to add devices and set layouts. Click EDTU. The serial number can be entered manually or added by scanning the barcode. After the completion of filling in serial number, the microinverter serial number will be automatically imported. Then click the Finish button below. Please note that if you want to add more microinverters, just click Add DTU, fill in all required information, and then click Next to complete this step. Then we can move on to lay out your plant. You can change the array name, Fill in the azimuth and inclination of your modules and then select the layout pattern. Click Save and enter the PV module layout interface. Adjust your modules according to the actual installation and click Next when the layout is complete. Upload the installation map of the power plant or you can also directly click Next to start more settings of the power station. Fill in the rest of information about the plant. You can choose whether or not to enable the relevant options to allow the owner to view the layout and networking, and then click Finish. Now, your power plant is turned on and starting. You can see the detailed operation status of the microinverters in the power plant you have just created, and control the microinverters in a remote and timely manner. That's all about this video. Thank you for watching.